G'day, it's Jamie, and welcome to Where's My Yowie. Today, I'm reading a few old newspaper reports about a mystery canine that was shot near Meribarak, Queensland in 1946. So we'll get into it. This first article was published in the Meribara Chronicle, Wide Bay and Bernard Advertiser on Friday the 21st of June 1946, titled Claims to have shot a lion. The Yangari lion is still at large. Police from Meribara made inquiries in the area yesterday. They learned from Mr R Tanok, who reported the presence of the lion, that he had been in the locality for nearly seven months. Two calves are reported to have fallen victims to the animal. Although sceptical of the fact that the beast reported to have been seen is a lion, many farmers are not taking chances with their cattle and are bringing calves close to their homesteads. Mr Tanup told the police that he had definitely seen a lion and he had actually shot at it from a distance of 20 yards but it escaped unharmed. According to reports received by police, the lion is operating between Yangari and Oakhurst. The end. Okay, so this next article was published in Brisbane's The Courier Mail on Saturday, the 13th of July, 1946, titled, Yangari Lion Yelped Like a Dingo When Hunter Scored Hit. After a week of frantic hunting, the boys in Maribara now think that the Yangari lion is not a lion, but a dingo. Inspector T. Brannerley of Maribara said last night, if there is anything at all, it is probably a big dingo. A complaint from a farmer started all this. He reported that two of his potty calves had been killed. He linked their death with mysterious roaring he had heard some months previously. We contacted reliable, sober-minded people in the district, but none of them had heard or seen any strange animal. Anyway, dingoes are quite capable of killing calves, Inspector Brennerley added. The lion was seen, shot at and hit near Maribara on Thursday morning, but it didn't roar, it yelped. This supports the theory of police and most local residents that the lion is a big dingo. Mr Ted Ferry, proprietor of Maryborough's Commercial Hotel, was the lucky marksman. Here is his story. Twelve of us went out on hunt on Thursday morning. We divided up into three groups of four. I was the first to sight the animal. I was only about 40 yards away, but the country was rocky and I could see it very distinctly. My first shot missed, but my second got it in the neck. It seemed to rub its neck with its paw, yelped, and then went for its life. I really think it is a big dingo. I know it wasn't a lion because it did not have a bushy mane, but it could have been a lioness. We will go out again today, camp overnight, and continue our search for the animal tomorrow. This much I know, it was a Yangari mystery animal because its tracks checked with tracks of the animal reported to have been responsible for killing other animals around here. The end. Okay, so this final article was published in the Maryborough Chronicle, Wide Bay and Bernard Advertiser on Tuesday, the 23rd of July, 1946, titled, Two Bullets Needed to Kill the Yangari Lion. The Yangari Lion is dead although in fact it was a lioness. She was shot by Mr Christian Pedersen Mose, Meribara Aramara Mail Carrier, about 20 miles from Meribara, just off the T-Bar Road, about seven o'clock on Friday morning last. Mr Mose was on his way from Aramara to Meribara on his mail run when he saw the animal. Last night, Mr Mose, speaking from Aramara, said there was no doubt the animal would terrify even the most experienced bushman and could easily, easily have been mistaken for a lion. The skin of the animal is now on view at Mr Ted Ferry's commercial hotel, with a charge of two shillings is being made to view it. The proceeds being devoted to the Bush Children's Health Scheme. 
Last night, Mr. Ferry took the skin to Maribara Police Station, where it was inspected by police officers and subsequently returned to the hotel. Here is Mr. May's story. I was travelling along the road when suddenly I saw this animal. I realised it was something unusual. I immediately got a bead on it with my 303 rifle and fired, hitting it in the head. I don't mind telling you, I was terrified when it got up after that and tried to make towards me. I lost no time in reloading and put another bullet through its skull. That settled it. The animal looked ferocious and would have, been, would have frightened the most hardened bushman. Asked what he thought the animal was, Mr Mays replied, Candidly, I do not know. She, it was a bitch, was far bigger than the biggest dingo I have ever seen, and I have seen some big ones including crosses. She is too long in the hair for a dingo. Her pelt is more like fur, yet she has a bushy tail. She was very big in the head and chest with long hair under the neck. She was not proportioned like a dingo, being more of a blocky type and very sturdy. She was of a ginger colour and with her head turned sideways, looked for all the world like a lion. Her spore was at least four and a half inches. Stating that he was confident the animal was known, was that known as the Angari lion, Mr May said it was possible that it was a cross between a dingo and or an Alsatian with a collie dog. Mr Mays discounted the theory that the animal might have been a cross between a dingo and or Alsatian with a fox, adding that he had heard previous opinions expressed on this matter. Personally, he did not believe that a dingo would mate with a fox. Mr Mays said that he measured the animal after it had been killed and before it had been skinned. It measured six feet from tip to tip and was a shade over two feet, six inches high. I did not weigh her, but she was about 170 pounds. She was in splendid con condition and very fat, he added. Asked whether the animal would be capable of killing calves, Mr May said she was big enough to kill a half-grown bullock. In fact, when I opened her, she had a half a fair-sized calf in her, and there were the remains of at least one fowl. Mr May said that many experienced bushmen had seen the animal, but none could actually say what it was. The spot where the animal was shot is about 10 miles across country from Yangari, where the lion was first sighted. The end. Now, this is really interesting, and I'd love to know what this is. It's really weird that, like, some people say it's a dingo, and, uh, but some people say it looks like a lion, which is like crazy, whatever it is. It's apparently been around for seven months and killed two calves at first. Uh, Mr. Tannock shot at it, but he missed and it ran off. Um, and then uh, the lion was seen and shot and hit near Maribara on, on one day on Thursday morning and it roared, it didn't yelp. And they're saying that the lion is a big dingo. Um, and like Mr. Ferry's first shot missed and his second shot got it into the neck, and it rubbed its neck with its paw and yelped and then ran off. Um, it's really weird. And then Mr. Mose, who actually shot it, the mailman guy, um, he knew when he saw it that like, this was a really weird animal, and he even said that um, the animal would terrify even the most experienced bushman and could easily be mistaken for a lion. Uh, he shot it with his 303 in the head, and it got up and started coming for him again, which is like crazy. So he put another bullet in it and he said it looked ferocious and would have frightened the most hardened bushman. It was a female and bigger than the biggest dingo he'd ever seen. But he said its hair was too, too long for a dingo and its pelt was more like fur. It had a bushy tail. It had a big head and chest with long hair under the neck. And it wasn't proportioned like a dingo. It was like more blocky, he said, and very sturdy. It was a ginger colour. And he said when its head turned sideways, you could easily mistake it for being a lion. Its spore or its paw trail, its paw prints, was four and a half inches wide. Um, and they, they thought it was a cross between a dingo and an Alsatian or a collie, which is weird. 
It measured six feet from tip to tip and two feet six inches high, which is, oh, that's a pretty big animal. It apparently weighed 170 pounds. It was in a really good condition and very fat. Uh, when he opened up the animal after he skinned it, it had a um, fair-sized calf inside her and the remains of a fowl. Um, and then he said that many experienced bushmen had seen the animal, but none can actually say what it was. And like by looking at the pelt of the animal, which should be up on the screen now, who knows what it is? I don't know whether it's a um, thylacoleo, but I reckon it might even be a, a European wolf because uh, um, with the Tantanula tiger story that I did ages back, um, where they were seeing uh, tigers at Tantanula, South Australia, and then one guy actually shot a wolf there, even though that didn't turn out to be the actual tiger, but they called it that. So it's interesting whether this is like a, um, a thylacoleo or maybe a European wolf that somehow made it to Australia. Anyway, it's really interesting, and I'd love to know what that creature actually was. Okay, that's it for me. I'll get back to you all next time. Bye.